Hey everybody, and welcome to Cookie Adventures with Katie, Season 3. Uh, on today's Foodie Friday, uh, we are going to be making cherry scones. Now, everybody's going to be happy with this episode. I'm not going to tell you why, but everybody will be happy with it. Um, so, for the scones, uh, you want to have your, four, your oven to 400, um, and you want to have two cups of flour, a half cup of sugar, two teaspoons of baking soda, uh, a cup and a half, yes, of cherries, a teaspoon of salt, um, eight teaspoons of frozen butter that is cubed, um, eight teaspoons is half a stick, I think. Um, a half cup of sour cream, a half cup of whole milk, and uh, bake for 20 minutes. Easy enough, right? Yeah? Um, so we are going to begin this episode with some coffee from the, uh, the local coffee shop right down the two seconds away. And we are going to be continuing this with uh, some glasses of wine. So, um, once the wine is introduced, I will introduce it to you, and uh, we will go from there. So, with all that being said, Cooking Adventures with Katie, Season 3, Funny Friday. Alright, so I lied. The, um... Eight tablespoons of butter is actually one stick of butter, so go ahead and take your your butter stick and um, cube it um, so that way we can uh, cut it into our scones. Um, and now when you cut butter into uh, flour and things, uh, it's exactly what it sounds like. You put the butter in, you use two knives, and you cut the butter in. Um, so what I'm doing now is not showing you what I'm doing, but I'm cutting my butter into cubes, putting them into a little glass bowl, and then they're going into the freezer until um, everything can get ready because I am ill-prepared as an individual as a whole. And uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, go ahead and cube your stick of butter and uh, put your butter in the freezer for it to get chilly cold. All right, so go ahead and set your oven to 400 um, on bake and 400. All right. Yes. Okay. Now we want to get a large bowl and uh, we're going to add two cups of flour, a half cup of sugar, two, table two teaspoons of baking soda, and a teaspoon of salt. So get your bowl. Also... Look at what we got. It's nice. And there's cabinet space underneath the counter. Yes, yes. All right, one. I am nothing but a liar to y'all this episode. This is straight up ridiculous. I pulled out the confectioner's sugar. So if you have containers that you keep your uh, cooking things in, make sure everything is properly labeled. And, which mine was not labeled at all, if you pull out the flour and are thinking, wow, the flour is normally separate from the sugar, it probably is, and you're probably a crazy person. So, let's try again with this flour. One cup all-purpose flour. Two cup all-purpose flour. And if you're wondering why my flour isn't white, it's not bleached. We have two different colors of flours. We've got non-bleached and then bleached down at the bottom. And so let's get that a half cup of actual properly granulated sugar and not confectioner sugar. All right, and then a half cup of sugar. One teaspoon, teaspoon baking soda. Two teaspoons baking soda. One teaspoon salt. All right, we're gonna go ahead and mix this together right quick before we cut in our butter. All right, and then 
Uh oh. Pour us a glass of wine. The wine that we have today is a nice Merlot of the Dark Horse brand because bad horse, bad horse, bad horse, he's bad. Um, only I suppose in this case it'd be dark. Anyway, um, where is my wine bottle over there? I need to. I am not destroying a steak knife. What are you talking about? I need to get this thing open. Something that I just noticed. Wine bottles like this. So the dark horse symbol is upside down. However, there is a wine glass. I see what you did there. All right. Important rule of wine. Let it breathe. Um, another important rule of wine. Slurp your wine. A third important rule of wine, when you purchase your wine, purchase your bottle sideways because your cork will dry out if it's left sitting up for too long. And uh, if your cork is dried out, air will escape, flavor will diminish, and you will be one not happy person. Did it breathe enough? No. Is it delicious? Yes. So, y'all heard the oven beat. Let's, uh... Let's get that butter. Alright, so take your frozen butter, scoop it into uh, your flour, get yourself a knife, plus another, or if you've got one of those uh, bread cutty pastry cutter things. Use that. It'll be easier. But I don't. So we're going to do this. And that's pretty much it. And you want to cut the butter in until everything is a bit crumbly. And uh, once it's a bit crumbly, I will come back to you. Alright, so everything is cut in, and uh, you see how we have some crumbly pieces, this should be our butter. And, um, and now we add our, uh, our wet ingredients as well as our cherries. So, we want to add, let's move that out of the way, a half cup of sour cream. Alright, correction, we'll do a cup of cherries first, because sour cream is wet and we're going to be using this. So, one cup and a half of cherries, a half cup of sour cream, dairy-free if you so desire, which is what I'm doing, and then a half cup of whole lactose-free milk. And now we take our uh, handy-dandy wooden spoon, because that's what it calls for, a wooden spoon specifically, and a sip of our wine. And uh, we spoon these together until just combined. And, and that's it. Um, and then gather yourself a, uh, a cookie sheet, I suppose. It says a cookie sheet. All right, so now it says to spoon onto the cookie sheet. I'm gonna get a little bit crafty here. Let's see if, let's, let's see how well this works. And if not, I'll, uh, I'll make it work. And uh, show you guys. So, it is spooned. This is our scone. <laughs> no. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to spread this sucker out. And scones are what? Uh, triangular traditionally, I guess I suppose. So we're gonna spoon, spread this out. 
as smooth as we can and then cut them in the triangles and uh, and then throw, throw them in the oven. Uh, maybe that might work. Let's come back. Ta-da! So it's completely ugly looking, but batter wise, tastes pretty legit. So, um, oh, no, I know how to do it. Will this work? I don't know. Will it set up the lines for when everything's ready to come out? Maybe. Will it make things easier? Maybe. And then we'll go like like a dece across a dece away. And then cut these into triangles. Okay. I don't know. Let's see how this works. Into the oven at 400 for 20 minutes. All right, so this is where I make everyone happy. So that, uh, that cup and a half of cherries. Yes, ma'am. That cup and a half of cherries that I have came from a four pound bag. I'll let you figure out what that means. Really? Really? Yes. Combine together four cups of cherries, three tablespoons of sugar, and one and a half teaspoons of cornstarch. All right. You also want to use a slightly larger bowl than this, and remember that cherries stain, so I will now be sporting a new uh, red polka dot shirt. So, with this, we're going to take our pie crust that we totally made ourselves and uh, use the back end of a knife to cut it into quarters. They're lopsided quarters, but they're quarters. Also, don't forget to take a sip of your wine. And using your super fancy rolling pin, fashion these quarters into approximately eight inch circles. Let's see how well this works. All right, beautiful. Now, take a cup of your cherries and place it in the middle. All right, try and keep everything kind of in the middle. All right. And then, we are going to fold over like this in a pleat where we have our uh, crust has pleats all right like this and and place onto your parchment lined cookie sheet all right and then swap out your scones for these oven still at 400 for 30 minutes. Ah, oh, how time flies. Hmm. I think it's time for glass number two. Next, we take a pie crust that we totally just made uh, from scratch and use a martini glass to uh, cut circles into it. We want three and a half inch circles. Then in a well-greased muffin tin, put down your uh, little circles. I managed to make nine from one pie crust. If you wanna leave it at six, that's perfectly fine. Or if you wanna try and stretch it to 12, that's cool too. Or four, because that's what I got from the original length of pie crust. All 
Or no, I got five in the original pie crust. All right. And then next, we take our totally not from a can uh, pie filling, so uh, that we can get it out of the pantry, and uh, place it into the cups. Take a third, totally and completely homemade pie crust that you totally made yourself and did not purchase from the store because you didn't feel like cooking uh, or using six sticks of butter. And lattice your pie crusts or your pies like so. And tuck everything in. All right, and then next we pull out our tarts, which just finished from the oven, and then make a sad face because two and a half of them did not hold up. I will show you those in a moment. Um, and then now with these, we go ahead and pop them right in. Now the uh, the uh, recipe for this one says 425 for 45 minutes, but that is for a nine inch pie pan. So, but since these are minis, we're going to keep them at 400 and put them in for 20 minutes, and then just keep an eye on them because that's a complete sentence. And next, we uh, do yesterday's dishes that we should have done yesterday, as well as today's dishes that we are doing today, while we finish our second glass and start up a third one. Dark Horse, you have such lovely conversations. So at this point, here's where I am. And if you don't understand this, it means you're too young. I went to move the bottle of wine over so I could clean the counter right here and took a sip. I am still on glass three, people. Yes.